everyone and welcome back. We are going to be doing a 1.6 EcoBoost engine strip down today. So this engine had a bottom end failure, it was also down in compression. We've got it out of the car and we are going to get it stripped and we'll do a bit of a detailed rundown at the end. Okay, so we've got the engine stripped now. We are gonna run through some of the parts. So we're gonna start at the top. So you've got your camshafts here, normal double overhead cam design. They're pretty mild from factory, 7.9 mil of lift on the intake cam. So yeah, they're pretty mild, mainly built for low down response and fuel economy. They use a solid lifter design. So there is no such thing as a drop-in cam with these. All these are coming different sizes from Ford, which we covered in our build video that we did on these um, so yeah you've then got the we'll move on to the cam sprockets so this solenoid will divert oil in different places to the cam sprockets and it will change the camshaft timing in relation to the crankshaft timing so it can advance and retard the timing using this solenoid on per, per camshaft which will give you greater efficiency, more power, more fuel economy. This is the cylinder head, so this is a 1.6 EcoBoost cylinder head. You can see the intake ports, they are in a, a D-shape design. This is for, this is to increase air speed, air velocity, which makes the combustion event much more efficient, much better for fuel economy. It just creates a much more efficient burn. Now, when you're pushing these cars or you're increasing the power, you've got bigger turbos, this is obviously not quite so efficient you know you want more volume to get into your cylinders so porting work you could gain a lot of power from porting on these uh, which again we covered in our build video this is actually the one off from the engine we just stripped so the bottom end went on that one and the bearing failed and you can see that the piston actually smacked the cylinder head so tight that it's imprint imprint printed it's uh, it's numbers straight into the head Next up, we've got the engine block. So this is an aluminium block. It's open deck by design. So there's no reinforcing around the outside here. There's also the slight gap in between all the cylinders. So that's where people talk about the block mod, put block mod shims in there. Um, half common failure is for the cylinder walls to bow out. But again, half common. Um, you can get uprated ductile steel liners for these by open deck or closed deck. Again, we can see them in our uh, 1.6 EcoBoost build where we put the stronger open deck liners in. Bottom of the block then, so we've got the girdle design. So they are really, really strong girdle design on these. So this whole section here is there to support the crank and support the engine block. So it stops any flex in. So this is a really good design, especially when we're pushing higher boost, more power. It just stops, keeps everything where it should be with no flex anywhere. So we take the girdle out and we're left with the crank. 
It's a cast crank, which is pretty rare nowadays. Most modern cars do have forged cranks. But again, people have been revving these to 8,000 RPM and over 300 horsepower for quite a while. So it seems to be pretty strong. You can see as well that cylinder two, this is the one that failed. Hopefully you can see it in the camera. That is not round anymore. So yeah, the bottom, the uh, bearings on that just completely disintegrated. Next up, we are into the pistons. So these are a hyper eutectic piston. They're very strong in design. You can't quite see on this one because they're dirty, but when you get a clean one, they do have a um, thermal coating on the top and they've got anti-wear anti coatings around the side. They are a pretty strong piston, to be fair. There's plenty of people running over 300 horsepower on these. The weakest point is probably the rods. So these are powdered metal, hot forged rods. They're strong, but we would say not as probably not as strong as the pistons are going to be. You can also see it. Uh, so this is the cylinder that smacked the cylinder, smacked the cylinder head, and these bed rooms are chewed through. Final thing we're going to chat about is the oil pump. So these are a mechanical variable displacement oil pump on these. So what they do is, as RPM builds and fuel pressure, oil pressure would normally build this varies its output so it's not just spinning and building oil pressure and dumping it through a spring dumping it through a relief valve it will vary its output so there's less wastage and less parasitic drain the other thing worth mentioning on these is the bearings also get unfiltered oil so there's two outputs for the oil pump you've got one there one there yep that's the two this one goes to your oil filter and then the rest of your engine and this one goes to your crank bearings. Now, the only filter for your crank bearings is that little gauze there. So if you're skipping service set, services, um, then yeah, your oil is just gonna get full of crap. And the first thing to go is probably your bearings, which, which we suspect is what's happened on this engine. Yep, the oil that came out of it was disgusting. And you can see the oil that's left in the sump, apart from the bearing material, is grim. So that is our Semi-detailed 1.6 EcoBoost stripped down of this failed 1.6 EcoBoost that we've got in today. If you've got any questions or want any more details, drop us a message or drop us a comment. If not, please subscribe and yeah, we'll be back soon with some more videos.